Hello, uh, I'm Paul Beckwith, and uh, of course this is the uh, star. I'm just the sidekick. This is uh, Shackleton. Nothing like a uh, couple uh, pogo sticks with um, some of the batter still on it for, uh, you know, enticing uh, Shackleton to uh, keep engaged and uh, be a big part of this video. And he's purring like crazy. So in this video, I'm going to talk about a new paper that came out recently. It's called The Vertical Feedback Mechanism of Winter Arctic Amplification and Sea Ice Loss. Okay, clearly a big part of Arctic temperature amplification is due to uh, rapidly declining sea ice. And when the sun is still shining, a lot of the extra energy is absorbed on the dark surfaces in the Arctic. But what happens um, from December 1st to about February 28th when the Arctic is in darkness? Okay, so there's no longer sunlight shining on the Arctic. So this um, albedo feedback kind of goes away. So what's the reason that the sea ice still doesn't form over certain regions in the Arctic in the dead of winter? Specifically in the last number of years, over the... Um, over the Barents Sea and the Kara Sea, okay, we have open ocean. So what this paper does is it looks at the areas where there's no sea ice in the winter, in those dark months. And what it finds is that the, you know, the, because of the open ocean, the specific humidity, there's a lot more water vapor in the air above the open ice. There's... Um, a lot of heat transfer coming up from the ocean into the atmosphere, heating the lower atmosphere, causing these really, really warm anomalous temperatures in the Arctic in the dead of winter in these regions. And often the jet stream position is pegged such that there's a strong ridge going up and covering this region of the ocean as well. But, you know, is it the, I mean, it's the chicken and the egg sort of thing. The warm region is there, the hot air is rising. You get turbulent heat flux coming up. Turbulent heat flux is basically sensible heat plus latent heat, convective heat rising up above the open areas of the ocean. Um, so, so basically you get a warming of the atmosphere, lower atmosphere over the, over the region in the Arctic where there's no sea ice coverage. And this is in the winter months when there's no light in the Arctic. So some of the main mechanisms are the upwelling long wave radiation. So that's basically the heat is upwelling from that region. Not only is heat being carried up physically by turbulent convective um, uplift, but there's also the ocean is warmer than the surrounding sea ice. There's still a big gap of sea ice there. So that heat rises up. Um, there's also the, so the heat is also radiated up. Long wave upwelling, long wave radiation goes upwards. That's increasing. And of course, some of it is uh, reflected back downward. So you get downwelling, long wave radiation, and that is increasing also. So the net effect is, so there's a feedback loop coming into play here. And the amount of upwelling heat is increased. Uh, I think they found the study found 8.9 percent per year, and this is from 1979 to 2016. So let's get right into the details of this uh, very interesting, very fascinating paper. It's open source, so you can just. Google vertical feedback mechanisms of winter Arctic amplification and sea ice loss. Or you can go to my blog, paulbeckwith.net, and there'll be a post soon on this paper with all of the links and stuff. Please don't forget to support my work via PayPal. I really rely heavily on these donations, and I thank everybody who has donated in the past, even the price of a coffee or two. You know, it all helps. Um, so this is uh, my, my Facebook page um, where I posted this paper recently. And I also tweeted it out here. Okay, and uh, on my Twitter feed. And if you go and do a search Twitter for Zach Labe, I highly recommend his work. He's got lots of these graphics here. And we're talking about 
the the uh, Barren and the Kara Sea up in this region. Um, notice that the ice stays away from from this region. Okay, so this region is this is a look in October, but this region basically stays ice free. Of course, the ice is doing very poorly this year. Um, this is a Bering Sea ice, so the Bering Sea ice is way down. So this is going to be another region where these effects that we're seeing in this paper discussed will will extend outwards to the Bering Sea as well. So first of all, where are these regions? Well, there's a good map on Arctic sea ice graphs. If you Google Arctic sea ice graphs, not only do you get all the real-time information on what the sea ice is doing, but you can, there's a map down here, and this is the map here. So we're talking about no sea ice in the Barents Sea and the Kara Sea in the dead of winter. The study is from December 1st to February 28th, so the three months, December, January, and February. No sea ice here. Lots. So this is the region that we're looking at. Of course, this region opens up in the, um, you know, September. It's quite open, but it does fill in again. So these effects are different. But now the the um, Bering Sea is losing its sea ice rapidly. So we'll see similar feedback effects that we're seeing here and discussed in this paper, you know, up in this region soon. Okay, so another thing is, you know, what exactly is upward and downward long wave radiation. Okay, so if you just Google, go to Google Images and Google this, and there's a good energy Earth budget here. Okay, so you get the incoming solar radiation. So this is short, called short wave radiation. Light from the sun comes in, some of it's reflected by clouds, some of it's reflected by the surface, a lot of it is absorbed by the surface. The surface heats up, because the surface heats up, it emits this heat back up into space. That's the upwelling uh, long wave radiation, also known as infrared radiation. So that goes up, that's emitted, and some of it is reflected back downwards. So that's downwelling long wave radiation. So this is increasing, and this is increasing over these areas where there's no sea ice in the dead of winter. You don't need the short wave radiation. This goes to zero, of course, in the in the darkness of Arctic winter, but this, but you've got open ocean, there's still heat being emitted, so it's emitted up to space here, um, long wave radiation, and there's downwelling long wave radiation. So upwelling and downwelling long wave radiation. Um, these are some conduction, convection, and latent heat. These are other ways that heat is going up into the atmosphere. So it's going coming out of the ocean, going up into the atmosphere. This is a, a more detailed um, number, um, a, a more detailed image of the same sort of thing. Here is the surface radiation, the outgoing long wave radiation, and the downwelling uh, long wave radiation or back radiation. This, by the way, if you Google sur surface turbulent heat fluxes and you want to find out a lot of details about these turbulent heat fluxes, basically turbulent is being the sum of latent and sensible heat going up. There's all kinds of information in this particular paper. So let's go back to the paper in question. So what they found, the sea ice reduction is accelerating in the Barren and Kara Seas. That's what the study is, but it's also happening in other regions like I just discussed, like the, the Bering Sea and the Chukki Sea. So several mechanisms are proposed to explain the accelerated loss of Arctic sea ice. Okay, um, so we're looking at December to February. So it's not an albedo effect because the sun is not shining in the Arctic. Okay, so there's something called reanalysis data. This is the European reanalysis data. And it's talking down wave, downward long wave radiation is an essential element for sea ice reduction. Okay, this is in the dead of winter, but can primarily be sustained by excessive upward heat flux from the sea surface exposed to air in the region of sea ice loss. So there's no sea ice, so there's a lot of heat coming out of the ocean, going into the air in the dead of winter. It goes up in through the lower atmosphere, causes the heating, so there's more upwelling long wave radiation, there's more downwelling long wave radiation, which feeds back to keep the sea ice open um, all winter in, in some of those regions. This turbulent heat flux, remember all that is, is it's sensible heat plus 
um, latent heat. So it's sensible heat is the heat that you see which causes a temperature rise. Latent heat is the heat that the temperature stays fixed, say at zero degrees Celsius at the freezing point. And all that heat goes into um, uh, basically into changing the, the phase state. So changing a solid to a liquid or a liquid to a gas. Okay, so that increases the air temperature. So this turbulent heat flux goes up into the atmosphere, increases air temperature and specific humidity in the lower troposphere, mostly in, in the boundary layer in the first 1.5 kilometers above the surface. That increases downward long wave radiation. So it feeds back, keeps the ice open. So we're clearly seeing this process in the Barren and Kara Seas. And what, it, what the work shows is that the feedback process is being amplified. So it's increasing at the rate of 8.9% every year. And this is from 1979 to 2016. The availability of excessive heat flux is necessary for the maintenance of this feedback. And a similar mechanism of sea ice loss is expected to take place over the sea ice covered polar region when sea ice is not fully recovered in winter. So in other words, in whatever regions are open um, water, um, then uh, in the winter, then this type of effect is going to happen. Okay, so let's have a look at the figures here. Okay, so I'll go into the nitty gritty of the paper. So this is, a, this is Greenland here. This is the, remember um, the image here. So we're talking about the Karis Sea and the Barents Sea surrounding bracketing Novaya Zemla. This is, this is where they dropped the Russians, uh, the Soviet Union, um, detonated Tsar Bomba, the largest H-bomb in history. And when they sit, when they get rid of all their submarines or nuclear submarines that are decommissioned, they just sink them around this island with reactors intact. So, you know, there's, I wouldn't want it. There's probably a lot of radiation coming, you know, um, coming from this, from the Cold War uh, weapons programs, etc. Okay, so anyway, we're talking about this region here. Okay, so that's this region here. So what we have here, this is a sea ice concentration, the blue shading. So this is the change. This is a loss of sea ice. Um, the darker the blue, the heavier the loss. So this is, this, is, this is open ocean most of this time period, which is from December 1st to February 28th. So that's the blue shading and the two meter air temperature 0.5 degrees Celsius increments. You can see the lines closing up. It looks like you're climbing up a mountain here. Uh, instead of being topographic lines, it's air temperature. So it's getting very warm. As you go into this region, it's getting warmer and warmer and warmer. Okay, so the, the regions where there's no sea ice, the heat is coming from the ocean into the air. So right at the surface, the surface air temperature is much warmer than other regions because of the lack of sea ice. Okay, this is the this is the specific humidity now. Now the the green shading in all of these figures here is the sea ice basically uh, concentrations here. You know where it's sea ice is basically vanished. You know over the winter month, and what we see here is the specific humidity. So as you as you where there's open ocean, no surprise where there's open ocean, water vapor is getting up into the atmosphere. This is basically from the surface to about 1.5 kilometers high, which is a marine boundary layer, if you like, over the ocean. So the humidity is going up and, and, and uh, covering that region. No surprise. Humidity rising, though, is heat. Think of all the latent heat in that water vapor that's rising up. Now, this is the upwelling long wave radiation at the surface. Okay, um, and what we're seeing is, so the red contours, we're getting, you know, no surprise again with the where areas where there's open ocean. There's a lot of heat coming up from the ocean into the atmosphere, and that's uh, measured here as upwelling long wave radiation. And what happens, that radiation that goes up, some of it is reflected back down. The downwelling long wave radiation, these are the amounts here that are reflected down. It's a bit offset from the center of the open ocean. Okay, now turbulent flux. This is the heat rising from the ocean into the atmosphere. It's sensible plus latent. And I'll continue this video for a part two. Thanks for listening and check out my blog.